taking you're trying to build Westeros in right. the imagination of your characters. Uh, so you're not if you do that, you know you're not going to see probably maybe you will on Game of Thrones. You're not going to see them do some crazy cinematic trick with uh, you know split screens or strange colors or or something where they're where they're um, uh, drawing. Uh, some kind of some kind of uh, slightly heady comparison between the characters, uh, but the great and or using animation and those were all techniques that I got to use in oh, these scripts. So cool. I got to use you know so you would you would have um, you know you would have uh, scenes in some of these scripts where there were uh, shadow puppets and things like <laughs> that. It was just crazy crazy ass stuff, and it w- I was really uh, proud proud of them. But they, as, like you said, they weren't really getting made. I, I have a million questions, but which of those projects involved shadow? puppets it was the clinton impeachment how are you going to do the clinton impeachment with shadow puppets well there's a there's a a a part of the story which involves a substance that gets on a blue dress Uh and i thought that that it was just there was a you know a lot of it is a a sort of um at least the way i wrote it it would be very it would be a very different story now right uh historically just i mean it's it's um you know it's like 15 years since i wrote it uh but there's a there was a part where you know some some human stuff. substance yeah. some stuff gets on a blue dress and we did that that was the plan to do as a, as, as a basically like a <laughs> shadow puppets uh and and there's you know there was there was a uh anyway that that it, would be the only shadow it's, puppets it's, that, that that was there were there are other shadow puppets too but there you go good lord so that didn't happen that's not going i mean because ryan murphy obviously did your classmates show um people versus oj yes yeah it came out great and then i understood that eventually he was going to get the clinton lewinsky story and then stopped um but it sounds like you have something ready to go if he were to pick it up again i did i did you know and i'm really proud of it but i think it's a you know we're in a different I, my i my perspective on uh bill clinton has changed yeah. in, the, in the last 15 years yeah um you know we're in a you know for my consciousness has been raised somewhat, yeah. but I, I think there's still a lot of it's there's there's a lot of complications to doing that story. Maybe now more than ever. Right. And you know, Monica Lewinsky is. And by the way, I, I always uh, had. I will say that she was the mo- to me the most empathetic character in the whole the whole yeah. piece. Yeah. Um, but you know, she has her own point of view, and and she's she's an adult smart individual yeah. now so it, it she was she's a, she, now she's she's yeah. an adult person who can well, tell her own story i don't know it's i i have it i i don't know <laughs> i don't know what to say about that yeah well that's like a classic kind of shoot this now scenario where we did one about angela davis and it's like someone should make the movie of angela davis i'm a 43 year old white dude i should not make the movie of angela davis there's I had, someone who will do it much better you know i had the same i had the exactly the same experience i wrote for um and I really enjoyed the hell out of working on it. Uh, I wrote uh, for Showtime. Uh, the executive was a uh, brilliant executive, per- Perlina Mbakwa. Mm-hmm. And she uh, hired me to write a story which was uh, centered on Pam Greer's experiences um, in the early days of black exploitation. Oh, wow. And, and I got to spend some time with Pam Greer and hear some of her stories and get to know her a little bit and and she's a remarkable person and that's that's a story it's a hollywood story yeah it's it's a it's a it's a black story it's also you know there's also part of that story are people who are just like goofy film students yeah uh, as i was and it's it's a really interesting um a really interesting story It was called super bad mama uh that was before Great. the movie super bad came out and it was um it's it's a great story somebody should be telling it yeah probably not me <laughs> um so you talked about a couple of films that you think should be made or a couple stories that you think should be told on screen that you yourself are not going to make. Well, I just said that about that's. I mean, the Pam Greer story. I, I mean, I'm actually hoping somebody hears this. Yeah. Uh, and then and then gets in touch with Pam Greer and 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 tries to do something because I think this is the moment to yeah. do the Pam Greer, uh, the Pam Greer story. And you know, we I would just watched uh, Black Klansman the other night, and there's yeah. a whole scene where there's um, Spike Lee uses posters from black exploitation movies yeah. and there she is yeah. and she's uh, she's a magnetic person uh, and you know she started out uh, wanting to be a film student at UCLA and mm-hmm. she's a very bright 
very bright person and, and a really interest. I mean, my God, her story is incredible. Yeah. I won't even start. Uh, but somebody's got to do that. Yeah. Get on it. How far did you go with it? I, I wrote a script and uh, uh, I thought I thought it was pretty good at the time. Uh, yeah. But you know it's 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 tough to get it's tough to get a movie made. It's amazing, like how these things work. This, movies movies are a complete mystery to me. I I, I really like um, series. I think I found my the right creative. And I'm not to say never never move to movies, but I think I found a really good creative environment for me here. Yeah, uh, doing series television. Yeah, is there another star you think really needs to be committed to screen? Uh, well, you know there was. Well, I, that was another one that I wrote uh, for H, HBO that, that, that didn't end up getting made. Uh, that was um, uh, it was actually the director. Well, I, I this was a rewrite. To be fair, yeah, uh, it was it was the director was uh, Mick Jackson, who's who's uh, who later went on to direct. I think one of the best movies HBO has ever made. Yeah, Temple Grandin, oh, which yeah. is just incredible. And he also did Live from Baghdad. He's a brilliant, brilliant British director. And we were working on a uh, a project. Uh, about the 1952 presidential election, which was the very first, and it was from the point of view of the um, the news folks at CBS, huh. because uh, up to that point, no one had broadcast like political conventions, <laughs> and all the um, all the format that's taken over American politics had its origin in the 1952 presidential election. It, 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 and it was a big surprise to everyone. And of course, that's the presidential election uh, where you had uh, uh, Nixon give the checkers speech. Oh, the it's checkers the, speech. It's the first time that you saw the, uh, uh, the backroom politics uh, it sort of ended and became became. We now have political theater. That was really the it was really the origin of of politics as electronic theater uh, in wow. America. And that was a uh, Stevenson versus Eisenhower. Yeah, it was a really interesting, a uh, very interesting uh, race. And it was a, a it's a fascinating project. Uh, and, and maybe maybe somebody should think about how to how to do that. Uh, I think it's it's a tricky one to do without it being. Uh, absolutely huge, uh, and the way hmm. the way we figured it out was uh, was very much through the the point of view of the um, the folks at CBS, including Don Hewitt, huh. uh, who were who were who were uh, who are working on on that. And it's 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 a really somebody somebody's got to do that uh, because so many of our uh, problems uh, this particular because you know we had other democracy and my limited understanding is always it's always imperfect yeah uh, but our particular set of problems uh really seem to go back to 1952 at least in the tell the intersection between politics and entertainment uh it's, yeah. and it's 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 a it's a fascinating story is that the year when it starts where it becomes like more of a more of a show and more of a I mean, because I think I think that, and then I hear like whistle stop tours where people are like, you know, garlanded out in their amazing costumes and the band and everything else. And it's like, when did it turn stupid? Oh, it's. I think it's. Uh, well, what do I know? Whistle stop. I mean, John Dickerson has a great. You said the word. Yeah, that's whistle a great. Stop. That's a great, a podcast. great podcast called Whistle Stop, which, yeah. and it, it's you, know, you start realizing that um, we always like to think that our era is is so unique and that people are so different now than they used to be. And, and the more you learn about history, the more you realize there's a great continuity in, uh, in human brilliance and stupidity. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm pontificating, I, but I, that was, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that was part of it. That was way, my understanding of it. And it, you know, was, I, I'm, you know, that's the wonderful thing about being a, uh, uh, a, a, tel a television writer or a yeah. movie writer uh, or just a writer in general is you get to learn about all sorts of different things. So, you know, I got to learn about, uh, uh, learn about how television worked in the fifties. And then, you know, a oh, yeah. few years later, I'm learning how meth, how you cook meth, the different methods <laughs> to cooking meth. And then, you know, and, and then we I got to learn about money laundering and, and, yeah. and all, all sorts. And then we just, the, the great thing is you get to kind of dabble in in these in these different areas, uh, but I think dabble is the, the key word because I yeah. don't I don't really consider myself an expert on any of it. And I, I will say I think that that's humility is is probably something that's kind of important. Well, knowing what you don't know, and we'd better not say this because someone will call us on it. Yeah, well, that's when you 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 try to get folks who know what they're talking about yeah. to to read your stuff and to 
to to weigh in. I mean, that's certainly on Better Call Saul. That was you know when we started taking it back to Better Call Saul when yeah. Vince and I started, I, we were both nervous as hell about it because uh, first of all, there have been a million great uh, lawyer shows. Yeah, uh, going back to Perry Mason. And beyond, there have been so many great court courtroom scenes done. And, and, and I, how are we going to reinvent that? How are we going to do, what are we going to add to that, the pantheon uh, there? And also, neither one of us is a lawyer. Yeah. Neither one of us has a legal background. Neither one of us is, I, I was a witness once. Uh, so that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's my experience. Uh, and, and, you know, what we, and so we, when we started the show, we thought, well, this is going to be about a lawyer who never goes in the courtroom. In fact, hmm. there was even a version where Jimmy slash Saul actually had a, a physical aversion to walking into a courtroom. <laughs> he would do everything he could to avoid actually walking in. And then, of course, you know, once we got started, the, the very first scene of Act One in the pilot, he's in the courtroom. Uh, but but we tried, we tried like hell to try to stay, keep it as accurate as possible. And yeah. that's, that just involves a lot of help. My parents are lawyers. And one thing I really appreciate about the show is that you think it's this really dramatic and cool job where you just walk in and prove people <laughs> wrong in front of everyone. And, but it's so much of like carrying around boxes and so much of like, where did I put that? And so much of, did I file it on time? And <laughs> this judge is mad at me because I asked for a delay and the other side is going on vacation. And you get into all of those really nitty gritty, very, <laughs> the actual profession is just so much, just like any job. Like, did I clock in? Did the punch card go? It's just, I think you really get that. I love, I love hearing that. You know, we, when we started, one of the things that we did was uh, I sat, some of the other producers, and then eventually the whole writer's room went downtown L.A., and we just hung out at the courthouse <laughs> while court was in session. And everybody would split up, and we'd go to different floors so and, cool. and just sit in the courtroom. And, what, you know, one of the things I learned was uh, a lot of time in court is spent scheduling. Oh God! I mean, yeah. It's remarkable how much time is actually just spent scheduling. How many long gaps there are in the action? Yeah, and, and so uh, we have this thing that we call. Hopefully, it doesn't bore the audience, but we call it boredom in the court. <laughs> uh, you know, we're just tried to um, occasionally show some of the the in between stuff and and try to show some the stuff that the lower stakes stuff that most drama ignores uh but you know the truth is that you know you take lower stakes things and you add them up yeah and they become high higher stakes also the other thing is i, I will say that's the you know there's there's like five, the five lazy notes hmm. in, out in the world and one of the one of the lazy notes that you get as a writer is the stakes need to be higher right, right. And, and you know it's not every <laughs> story has to have you know it has to have like a, a a baby tied to the railroad tracks. <laughs> Not every story has to have, you know, a bomb, a bomb set to blow up the center of the earth. I think the trick with a lot of the stakes questions is what does it mean to the character? If you really understand the character and you understand what the situation means to them, then, then that stakes right there. Yeah. I mean, the whole glory of this is projecting, you know, we get as viewers, we get to project ourselves into these lives that we're not living and and that's that's part of the fun. So that's I'm sorry I'm I'm on a rant. No, no, I I love this. I think you really directly you do that directly like board in the court in episode 404, the one that people will hear right before they hear this. Yeah, where Kim just goes to court and it, a judge calls her in, which is something I don't think I've ever really seen. Maybe on the Good Wife, but the judge calls her in and is like eating her lo- eating his lunch and she doesn't know what he wants. And at first I'm like, is he hitting on her or something? But he mentions his wife right away, which I was like, that was good writing. They established that that's not what's happening. <laughs> Heather Marion wrote that one. She did a great job. No, it was great. And then he just tells her, like, he tells her the plot of the verdict <laughs> um, and says, you're never going to fight a case like that. And what are you doing sitting in my courtroom? Like, yeah. She seems to be on looking for an answer sitting there. Can you sort of tell us where she's going? Like where her head is at? I think, yeah. I mean, I think Kim... Kim is a fascinating character to me in so many ways. She spent so much time clawing her way up to be um, a success. She's she's a real Hor- Horatio Alger, yeah. more so because she's also you know been fighting sexism and all sorts of other things, and she's um, she's she's managed to make a living and prove that she can be an excellent lawyer yeah. and and have and 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 have very good clients and, yeah. and have a business. But I think the accident she had at the end of last season, 
I think it accelerated something that would have happened anyway, which is she's now wondering what's the point of it all. Right. What, you know, yes, she's helping to open banks uh, throughout, throughout the South. 